Hi, Tracy Hugelmeyer here with VintagepreneurUniversity.com where I help vintage sellers start, grow, and scale their business on Etsy. I also own my own vintage business rustic guide that I've had on Etsy since 2013. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about something that you may not have thought about before, or maybe you have, but that is how to kind of hone in on the natural scarcity that selling vintage has. So scarcity is a selling technique that is used all over e-commerce and all over, you know, any type of retail and anything that anyone is selling. I'm going to show you what I mean by going to Etsy um, because Etsy uses it all the time if you and I'm sure you've seen it before, but let me point to you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I went ahead, here we are in an Etsy search, and I just typed in vintage Halloween decor into the search bar, and right away, um, on the top line, you can see right here, there's only one available, and it's in two people's carts. You know what that is? That is using scarcity as a selling technique. Now remember, Etsy wants to sell our items too, because that is largely how they make money. So they're using that as a selling technique on our behalf, but also um, for their benefit as well. If I really want this book and I see that there's only one available and it's in two people's carts already, you know, that will nudge me potentially to make a decision to buy quicker than, um, you know, if there were many of these available. If there were let's say, you know, 10 or 20 or 50 of these books available, then I might not care about making a decision right away because I know I can come back later and still get one. So a lot of factors are going to go into this, you know, how bad do I really want it? And, you know, is it something that I have to have? And if it is, then I'm much more likely to purchase it knowing that there's only one available and two other people, you know, might buy this at any moment. So that's why Etsy does that. And that is all about scarcity and using scarcity as a selling technique. So how else does this work? Well, it works really well with sales. Whenever you have a sale, you want to make sure that you have a deadline because, um, if somebody clicks in like this item, this, um, super adorable vintage ghost, and they, they're really interested in buying it and they see that's, that it's on sale, they're more likely to purchase it right away if they know that sale is ending, you know, tomorrow or in two days or in three days. Not only is it a one of a kind item that might disappear anyway, since there's a great sale on it, but it is that sale is ending soon. So these are all scarcity factors that play into this. But the problem with this listing is that there's no, there's nothing in here indicating when the sale ends. Um, if we look at the sales terms and conditions, which unfortunately is now this little bubble down here or this little link down here, it used to be more prominent, um, you know, at the top of the listing and you could see it. Um, but even if we click on that, it tells me that 10% of Halloween, but if this, um, seller were to say, hurry sale ends, you know, on the 31st or something like that, then that's adding that scarcity even more. And I would even go a step further. And like I said, because it's down here now and kind of hidden, most people aren't going to click on the view sales terms and conditions. Um, what I do now when I'm running the sale, I make sure to add to the beginning of the description a, a little blurb about the sale and when it ends so that that scarcity factor is there and there uh, someone is more likely to make that purchasing decision knowing that that sale is going to end at some point. So here's a little tip for you. Even if you um, are running constant sales in your shop, it's better to run short sales with an end date than to have a sale that's, you know, continuous for a long, long time. Anyway, I hope someone snatches up this adorable vintage ghost light. By the way, same thing with coupons. If you are sending out a thank you coupon, for example, make sure that you are sending an expiration date as well with that coupon. So somebody's more likely to use it um, than if it didn't have an expiration date. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, the other thing that, uh, you know, this video kind of is about is how specifically as vintage sellers, can we use the scarcity factor to our selling advantage in, of course, a non-sleazy and slimy 
uh, way. We don't ever want to use sleazy sales tactics, but um, knowing that our items are usually one of a kind, we definitely want to be using that to our advantage. You know, put in your item descriptions, you know, only one available. Or if you are listing something or talking about something on social media, you know, you can put just listed, make sure you go, you know, grab it before it disappears off the shelves or however you want to say it. There's only one available almost, you know, in a lot of cases with vintage. So you want to make sure to say that. And again, it needs to be authentic. Um, you definitely don't want to try and trick your customers in any way. So you're only saying things like that when it is true, when it's authentic, and then it doesn't come across as sleazy and you don't have to feel like you're using sleazy sales tactics. I would never ever tell you to do that. So I hope that helps you understand scarcity and how to use that in your business and specifically for your vintage business. If you'd like to sign up to get more of my free tricks and tips and resources. I have a special place to do that just for you as my YouTube listener. You can go to vintagepreneuruniversity.com slash secret, and I will link that below for you as well. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and click the little bell as well so you get notified whenever a new video comes out. And thank you very much for joining me today. Have a really great rest of your day. Bye.